Oh no, a bike's on fire! If only I checked my electrical connectors. Oh, who can help me? Never fear, power sports enthusiast, for it is I, Commander Connector from RM Stater's Echo Squad, the electrical connector help operatives. I can tell that this fire was caused by old corroded connectors. With knowledge of RM Stater's connector circle of death and proper application of RM Stater's electrical connector kits and tools, you can be back on the road in no time. Hey, I'm Evan, Head of Engineering for RM Stator. Uh, as you learn from Commander Connector, it's super important to maintain the connectors on your motorcycle. They can cause lots of problems. As a fellow member of the RM Stator Echo Squad, I'm going to show you our connector circle of death and explain why that is so important. Okay, so let's get started looking at the RM Stator connector circle of death. So the key to this whole chart is this step right here. High current flows through small contact points. That's kind of uh, the main reason that these connectors melt and fail. And I'm going to start here and kind of go around and explain how this all happens. Um, <clears throat> when you have small contact points, you're going to get increased heat between the, the two points where the connectors touch. That current flow right there um, is going to heat up more than the connectors designed for. Um, the next step, kind of like I explained, is excessive heat is transmitted to the connector's body. So that starts the process of breaking down the uh, plastic shell of the connector itself. Um, when that happens, the electrical protection barrier breaks under heat and loses its protective properties. So as the, uh, the plastic starts to get hot and melt, the terminals inside the connector can actually shift a little bit and that's going to start causing the weak connection points. Without the insulation barrier, the heat raises and the plastic body melts and becomes distorted. This is kind of like I, I just said, and this picture kind of illustrates that. Um, then the distorted plastic body changes the position of the connectors, and mispositioned connectors create irregular contact points between pins. And that leads us back to the start, where we have high current flowing through a really poor contact point. So this is kind of a chain reaction, and once it gets started, um, you can't really stop it. So it is important to maintain the connectors and replace them with when necessary. I'm going to show you some examples of some bad connectors, too. So here's a good example of a really badly damaged connector. Um, this is a common uh, style of connector used on a lot of motorcycle stators and ATV stators. Um, you can see how badly this one is melted. Um, this was uh, on a stator that was used with um, a regulator that had failed, um, which caused uh, this whole chain reaction to start happening. So you can see as it, it, it gets hot and it, it starts to deform and the terminals inside actually shift so they're no longer clipped in their correct position. This can can cause them to press out the back of the connector as the locking mechanism fails, um, or it can just cause them to sit crooked in their housing so they don't make good contact. Um, here's what happens when that connector ultimately fails. You can end up obviously destroying your stator. This is kind of a, a good example of showing you with failed windings here. And I'll show you another one. There's another uh, failed stator with a bad connector. So two things can happen um, once that, uh, well, one thing can, let's talk about this. One thing can cause the connector to fail, especially, and that is your rectifier failing. So when the diodes in your rectifier fail and you can't pass current on from your charging system to the battery, um, you have a lot of current flowing that's not being consumed well. So the next uh, highest point of resistance in that chain is the connector between the stator and the, the regulator rectifier. Um, that can very quickly lead to this situation with a completely melted and destroyed connector. Um, so I hope that illustrates um, some of the problems uh, with the failed connectors and why it's so important to keep them clean to make sure your charging system works well and lasts. So we're going to talk about uh, some of the other uh, ways you can repair and maintain your connectors now. Okay, so we're going to talk about repairing connectors that aren't too far gone. Um, this applies to uh, a connector that has corrosion buildup on the terminals, but otherwise it's in good shape. The plastic uh, of the connector is good, but they just needs to be cleaned up to make better contact. So I'm going to start with this. This is a used uh, uh, plug off of an old stator. And for this style and for most styles of connectors, you need some uh, sharp tool like this, either a really small flathead screwdriver or a pick like this to depin these. Most connectors have 
a very small uh, plastic tab inside them that locks the terminal in place. So I've already loosened this one, but with this style I would push the uh, pick in and lift up on the plastic tab while pulling from the back to remove it. So now that this one is removed, we can see an old terminal. Now this one's really not that bad, but I'm gonna show you how to clean it. So if I have it removed, you can use some fine sandpaper and completely clean the terminal on both sides. Make sure you get any of the corrosion off of it and make sure it's shiny before you're ready to put it back in. So this one you can see wasn't too bad to begin with but now it looks great. So once you do that you can then plug it back in. The locking tab should snap it in place as you push it in. And that's about it. You can do this on both sides of the connector and it will make a big difference. The last thing you want to do is use the dielectric grease that we include with all of our parts to make sure you get a good seal, waterproof seal inside the terminal. So you put a little bit in like that, kind of spread it over the uh, front of the terminal and that'll make sure to keep any moisture out and prevent corrosion in the future. So I'm going to show you how to deep in a couple other common styles of connectors. Um, this style is used in these plastic plugs that are uh, male and female versions. I've already depinned it. But you can see here the locking mechanism is actually on the terminal itself. It's a little tab here. And to depin these, you can use your pick. Let me put it in the right way. You can use your pick like this and push in on the tab. Once you've pushed it in, you can pull from the back and slide the terminal out. Cleaning and the dielectric grease goes the same way for these. Now this style is used on uh, ignition system connectors a lot uh, for the ignition coils and pickup coils on stators. These are sealed connectors with a rubber seal on the back. These have a little plastic tab inside and you need a sharp pick and you can lift the tab and pull from the back and release the terminal. So you can, on these style you can see the little uh, hole inside them. That's where the plastic locking tab on the connector fits. So that's how you remove those, clean them, use the dielectric grease, and if you do that you can keep the connectors in great shape uh, for the life of the bike. So we're going to talk about crimping on terminals for connectors and basically how to repair a connector that's too far gone to save. So here we have our, uh, uh, this is a common stator connector here, um, and this one's well used. It's not totally failed, but we're going to pretend like it's too far gone to save. So. As you saw from our other video about depinning the terminals, I've already done that. So here's our uh, wire. Let's pretend this is a wire coming from the stator's wiring harness and we just want to replace the whole connector on the bike. So to do that, we basically need to cut off our old terminals and we're going to crimp on new ones. So you can get RM Stator's complete connector kits here that come with all the common connectors used on stators and voltage regulators. And this is a really good cost-effective way to have um, all these extra parts around so you can easily repair your bike. So I've removed the old one. So if we still had this on the bike, um, we can just repair it there without removing anything else. I'm gonna cut off the old terminal. Okay, and then I'm going to strip back about a quarter inch of the insulation. I'm just using some wire cutters here to do it. And then I'm gonna twist up the end of the wire so it's tight. Okay, so the way this works, here's our RM stator crimping tool. Now this is a double crimp tool. It's gonna crimp in two locations on these kind of terminals. Um, one is to hold the wire and the other crimps around the insulation to keep it locked in place. So if you look inside the tool here, you can see that there's two sets of ridges that are different heights, um, and that's where the, the terminal sits in place. So basically, I'm going to set it in place, pushing the open end up into the crimper, and I'm going to put light pressure on it to hold the terminal in place. I also want to make sure that it's pulled all the way forward, uh, which will seat it correctly. Okay, so I got that in place. I'm going to insert my wire into the terminal and make sure that the insulation is sitting just inside the uh, back of the terminal and then crimp down with the tool and let go and it'll release. So I cut my wire a little too long here but that's okay. Um, it it would, should be a little shorter so it doesn't stick up into the terminal here.
but you can see that the back crimp is folded over onto the insulation that locks it in place and the front crimp is folded over onto the wire which makes a good solid connection. So most motorcycle and power sports connectors use terminals that will work with this crimper. Um, all the terminals in our kits do. And then once you're done, you can install it in your new um, connector. So here, I look at the front, the locking tab, you can see here is a little notch cut out in the bottom. This connector or this terminal has a locking tab. I'm going to slide them in place till it clicks and pull on it to make sure it's tight. So there you go, that's how you would replace the terminal using our crimping tool in our connector kits and install it into your new connector. And then you also want to use your dielectric grease on a brand new connection. Make sure you get some inside the face of the terminal there. And that way when you install it that provides a, a moisture barrier and it prevents any future corrosion. So doing that will completely repair your connectors with brand new parts and make sure you have the best connection possible. Okay, so we're going to talk about um, using the RM Stator soldering iron to make a, a permanent repair or a permanent connection. Um, now, a lot of times you'll see uh, people will do this to repair the connection between a, a basically a failed connector between a stator and a regulator. And there's obviously lots of other uses and places on a wiring harness where you need a soldering iron. So it's good to know how to do. I don't necessarily recommend um, doing a uh, uh, permanent hardwired solder connection for your stator to regulator. Much better to just replace it with new connectors, but in a pinch that does work. Um, so I'm gonna show you how to do it. I have our uh, soldering iron uh, turned on and I have the heat turned up all the way because I'm using fairly large gauge wire here to illustrate it. So to start, I'm gonna cut the insulation back. And since I'm kind of illustrating it here, I'm gonna give myself three quarters of an inch or so on each side. So using some wire strippers or well, wire cutters here, I've cut the insulation and pulled it off. You can also use those ratcheting wire stripper tools which are, are a lot easier. Um, so make sure you get down to good clean bare wire. Um, if there's any corrosion or um, anything on the wire itself, it's gonna prevent a good solder joint, okay? Then I'm going to use a piece of heat shrink here and I'm going to slide it onto my wire. I'm going to move it a couple inches back so it's not going to be affected by the heat of the um, soldering iron. So here's, now there's lots of different ways to do this. I prefer making my connections like this. Um, I twist the wires together. So basically I cross them and then twist them from both sides as tight as I can. So then when I'm done, I have a good kind of interlocked connection between each end of the wire and it's folded in on itself and it's not much bigger diameter than the wire itself. So the heat shrink will fit fine and I have a good tight connection. This will also hold the wire in place on a wiring harness or on your bike um, so you can make the connection, make the, or the, make the solder joint without the wires coming loose. So to start, now our wiring, or not wiring, our um, soldering iron comes with a, a sponge here that you can get wet and you can use to clean the tip of the soldering iron. Um, I like these a little better. Uh, the sponge will work fine, but this uh, kind of foil material in here works great to clean the tip and you can get these on Amazon or any electronic supply place. So you can just press the tip in and kind of turn it around a little bit and you'll get a nice clean shiny tip. So to start, you always want to tin the tip on your soldering iron, so you want to use some of the some of your solder and melt it on the tip and make sure it's flowing well. Okay, and then I'll usually clean it just a little bit, so I've got a layer of solder, but it's also clean. So to start with a good solder joint, you want to use the uh, the fat part of the tip, and you want to hold it down on what you're soldering first and let it soak up as much heat as you can. So I'm going to press it down against my workbench here and let it heat up. And then after it gets hot, I'm going to add solder to the wire itself. And you'll know that if your connection is hot enough, as it should be, you can just melt the solder 
directly onto the wires that you're soldering. You don't really want to have to melt it onto the tip of the iron itself because that doesn't help it flow down into the strands of wire. So I'm going to add it, move the iron a little bit, add it all the way across, make sure that it flows well. And then I'll usually move my iron underneath too and just make sure that it has flowed completely on both sides. Okay, so that looks good. You can see that the solder's flowed down into the strands of wire on both sides and that's going to completely lock it together and make a good connection. Now, you, after every um, time using your soldering iron, every single solder joint you make, um, it's a great idea to clean the tip and then tin the tip of the iron with uh, more solder. So if you completely cover the tip like that before you put it away, you can leave the iron hot and you'll never kill the tip on the iron. Well, you will eventually, but it's gonna last a lot, lot longer. If you don't tin it like that, the tips can overheat and burn out quickly. So now that I have a good solder joint there, I'm gonna slide my heat shrink up over the connection. And then I just use a small lighter and run it over the heat shrink. So now I have a good, permanent, completely sealed and insulated electrical connection. So the RM Stator soldering iron is excellent. Um, it uses tips for a Hacko soldering iron that you can get online easily. You can get them in all different shapes and sizes. Um, and this is a great uh, additional tool to your workbox uh, or your uh, workbench for making repairs on your bike.